So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about cryptography and its impact on the internet. And when civilians were first getting their hands on the internet, because originally it was developed by the military and you know it was finally opened up and, and people started being able to use it but one of the real early concerns about the internet was that there wouldn't be a good way to have private communication between individuals so for example there would be no way to have secure online transactions and now we all know right there's booming business going on on the internet and it's considered probably one of the most amazing breakthroughs in about the past 2,000 years of cryptography that people were actually able to come up with a really clever mathematical idea that allowed them to ensure that it would be possible for individuals to have private communications. So we'll talk about it a little bit in this video. So let's talk about how the internet we love almost never existed. And the, the problem was whether or not it would be possible to have private conversations on the internet. And would it be possible, again, to encrypt a message, send that to someone, and have them be able to decrypt it? And for a long time, people didn't think this was actually going to be possible. It took some, some clever mathematics to, to, to find a workaround for this. So you've got two people, right? We want to exchange information, and even if that falls into the wrong hands, that, that, that third party won't be able to understand the message. And it could be some, you know, maybe somebody, some evil entity that's spying on you. Maybe it's your own government that you're concerned with. And this is a big concern right now, this, this, this uh, balance between uh, uh, personal privacy and safety, especially right now in our age of terrorism. You know, that's, I think, probably one of the big concerns a lot of people have. And, it's something that we should all ask ourselves and be real, uh, you know, be real careful, I think. How much privacy are we willing to give up in return for safety or a feeling of, of safety? So, you know, you could talk about that for a long time. So that would probably be a conversation for a different time. But again, you know, how do you keep someone from intercepting your private communications online? So typically, right, what happens is some person is going to encrypt or code the message in some way. You send the message, and the second person uses the key to decrypt the message so, so that it can be read. Okay, easy enough. What's the problem there? You know, what's the weakness in the scheme? So the big problem historically in cryptography was how do we share that key, right? So I can encrypt some message. I can come up with some, some scheme to encrypt a message and send it to you. And then you get it and you're looking at it and you're going, well, I don't know what to do with this. You have to have that key, right? You have to have the method to decrypt it. And this was something that was always done historically. The same method to encrypt it was the same method to decrypt it, right? And that, that makes sense. You know, I think that seems natural. But how do we share that key? That's the big problem. And that was the, the hurdle, you know, for, for people online, right? If you send me a message... How are you going to get that key to me? You can't just email it to me because then, you know, somebody could intercept that, right? They could intercept the key, and then your message is compromised as well. So this, this problem of key distribution is central. It's the central issue in cryptography. So, okay, we agree upon some method of encrypting it, and, you know, we've got to get this key to decrypt it. So again, how do we get that key to each other? Well... We could meet in person, I guess, right? We could shake hands and say, oh yes, this is the secret key and this is what we're gonna use. But if you're trying to send a message to someone around the world, or you're trying to do some sort of, uh, uh, you're trying to purchase some good from somebody, again, you know, states away, that's not practical, you can't do that. You can't just call them on the phone because the same thing, you know, maybe somebody's listening in on the phone. So again, the same problem, once the key is compromised, then your message is also compromised as well if somebody intercepts it. So, you know, you could always go to a third party and say, hey, you know, uh, uh, you know, take the key and deliver it. And this is actually something that banks used to do in the 70s and 80s. They would literally have keys, you know, they would have the, the, the passwords inside of a, a brief, briefcase, and they would handcuff the briefcase and people would be going, you know, across the world, and that way they could have secure financial transactions. Uh, you know, again, not a cheap or inefficient, uh, you know, not a cheap and a very inefficient way of doing business, but, uh, you know, it's what they had to do. 
So again, you know, this is the problem with communication online is that it's just time consuming and expensive and it wouldn't be practical, right? That's kind of the, the fun thing about the internet is you can send a message and you know somebody wakes up and it's just waiting in their inbox for them. There has to there doesn't have to be this 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 exchange of information. So again, this was the big problem was that all the encryption methods had used a symmetric key. Whatever you use to encrypt it is what you use to decrypt it as well. And you know, even in elementary school, you know, it's it's simple. You know, so so a very simple example, you know, maybe you encrypt a message by uh, by so you have some message, and maybe you just swap the first and second letters, the third and fourth, the fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth. Well, to decrypt the message, right, you would just undo that method. You would just switch them all back. So that's an example of a simple symmetric key. So people began thinking, you know, would it be possible to come up with an asymmetric key? And even having this, this notion that maybe there's a way to come up with an asymmetric key was really revolutionary. And the point of an asymmetric key is that someone would be able to encrypt the message, but they wouldn't be able to decrypt the message. And, you know, so, so people had this idea that maybe we can do this, but mathematically there was a lot of hurdles and people kept trying to come up with a way to do it and it didn't work. They would try to come up with another way and do it and it didn't work. But finally, some really smart people came up with an idea to, to use a... Uh, um, some 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 clever mathematics to, and they came up with an asymmetric key. So again, why is this useful? Well, now the only person able to decrypt the message is the intended receiver. So right, you can encrypt a message and once you have it encrypted with this asymmetric key, not even you know how to decipher the message. It's now totally encrypted and only the intended recipient is able to decrypt that message. So this was the, the magic of this asymmetric key because with a symmetric key, there had to be some exchange of information between two people or two parties. And now with an asymmetric key, that, that exchange of information was no longer needed. And it took people a long time to come up with this solution mathematically. And we'll talk about how it works a little bit in another video, but just to think of, you know, reason by analogy to think about how this works. You know, suppose you wanted to mail me a package and, and you wanted it to be nice and secure. So you go to any post office in the world and at that post office, they're going to have padlocks for every single person on earth. So you go to the, the, the person and you say, I need a padlock for Patrick GMT. And they look through there and they say, here you go. So you take your package and you put the special Patrick GMT padlock on there. So now whatever you wanted to send to me is now safe and secure. Not even you, you can't even undo the, the, the padlock now, right? I mean, it's, it's stuck. So what you wanted to send to me is now encrypted. And the only person that is able to open that package is me, because when it comes to me, I'm the only person that has the key that's able to unlock that padlock. And that's the magic, again, with the asymmetric key on the internet. Anybody can encrypt a message to whomever, but only the person who, the intended receiver of that message, is able to decrypt it. And again, it's really cool stuff. Um, people didn't think they were able to, going to be able to mathematically even overcome this hurdle for a long time. So really cool stuff. It's made a huge impact on the way that we use the internet. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll talk a little bit about some of the mathematics involved. And it really comes down to a lot of common things that you've seen even in middle school and high school. And that has to do with prime numbers and with factoring numbers. And it turns out that factoring numbers is in general a hard process. So it just rests on those two simple ideas. I say simple, but those two basic ideas. And that's really the key to all of our internet security. So one last thing before we part ways here, I wanna give a big shout out to my friends at YouTube and especially to the people at the Making and Science team at Google. They helped make this video possible. So if you like this video, please thumbs up it, like it, share it. And um, if you share it on Twitter, please use the, the hashtag science goals and I would be much obliged to you. Thanks very much.